welcome to the Conspirators April case. Uh, before I talk to you about the wines, which is fantastic, incidentally, um, I'm just going to tell you a bit about the dates and a little bit of uh, usual, usual stuff. We're bringing it forwards. Um, Easter week is falling essentially I'm a bit worried about the Easter holidays I'm also a bit concerned about April because April is just chock-a-block with tastings um, I'm working to canter tasting wine then we've got Vin Italy we've got Grandi Lange which is just a Biolo tasting it's a terrible life I live but the upshot is it's virtually impossible to get the case out in April so we're going to bring it forwards um, to the last week of March which is fantastic it will disturb my birthday but that's okay so the deliveries are going to go out on the 22nd of March um, for you on the 22nd of March. The tasting is going to be on the 24th of March. Emma and I will be doing the local deliveries 22nd and 23rd. So that's roughly how it all fits together. And just as a side note, the Vina Curiosity tasting will be on the 31st of March. So even though you're a Conspirators member, or you're not, you're just watching this video, but whatever you are, um, do turn up to the to the Vina Curiosity tasting as well. And if you'd like the sample bottles, again, do get in touch. We, we can get them to you and make it all work. Um, if you're not a member of the Wine Club, please join. If you just want to try us out a bit, want to try the sample bottles, um, go to the website, type in Conspirators Tasting, and you'll have the opportunity to buy the sample bottles and it'd be a pleasure to see you at the Zoom tasting. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Any questions at all, send me an email to ben at batwine.uk. Everything's on the website. Um, the wines, the first wine. Uh, well, the first wine as far as tasting goes and the first, no, wine number one is Matteo Ascari's Gavi di Gavi. What does Gavi di Gavi mean? Gavi is a village like Barolo is a village, um, and Gavi is a central part. There are other villages allowed to call their wine Gavi. So if your wine actually comes from the village of Gavi, you can call it Gavi de Gavi. If you're in the wider area, you can call it Gavi. Um, they've actually made it clearer on the label now, and they put Gavi di Comune di Gavi, which doesn't really make it that much clearer at all. Anyway, um, it's made from a grape called Cortese. I used to have a bit of a downer on Gavi di Gavi, largely because Cortese is not the most expressive of grapes. And it, it's got that sort of Sauvignon Blanc-like thing. Not that it tastes anything like Sauvignon, but it's just a bit limited. It's kind of the status quo of white wines. But if you play those three chords really well, you can you can you can put together a really nice tune, and that's what I mean. This wine actually converted me. It does that beautiful little thing where it just gives you fantastically fresh, elegant, clean wine, um, and it's it's fantastic. But for springtime, I mean, that's what I was thinking about spring and Easter. This is this is one of the ultimate wines. So made by Matteo Ascari um, and his son, who Giuseppe, who's also called Matteo, even though he's called Giuseppe, we can talk about that another time. Um, but the Ascari estate is really a Barolo estate. So they buy the grapes in for this, which is why it's called Cristina, because Cristina's Matteo's mum. And it's made from contracted grapes, been the same growers for years and years and years, stainless steel fermentation, bit of lees contact, bottled in one go to make sure there's absolute consistency throughout the whole wine. Um, it's a brilliant wine. I think you'll really enjoy it. Wine number two is actually the Vino del Cook Prosecco. Now, this won't be wine number two in the tasting because you can't put a sparkling wine into the sample bottles. But I'll tell you about it. And I'm putting a Prosecco in it's Easter coming up and a couple of bottles of this is really useful around Easter time. And this is a Prosecco which will convert you all you unbelievers, into knowing that Prosecco is, is, it can be very, very special. It's not trying to be champagne. It's light, it's clean, it's fresh. And I like the Brut style best, actually. Brut and extra dry are my favorite styles of Prosecco. And this comes from single vineyard, Vina del Cook, which is a magnificent vineyard. It is stunning. Um, and it's made by Lionel Olot, who I've known forever and ever and ever. We've been buying this as our house Prosecco since the beginning of time. And this is one of my favorite ever cuvées we've caught. It's when you get it on the cusp. So it's nearly always a single vineyard, 
or a single vintage wine, except when the new wine's due in and they consider the new wine not to quite be mature enough, so they chuck in a wedge of the previous wine. So this is, well, the exact figures will be in your notes, but this is basically, it's a combination where, where the older wine is just blended with the fresh wine. It gives you that remarkable, gives you both depth and vibrance. Decant had it as you know, one of their best, uh, their best Proseccos. I love it. I mean, it's fantastic, fantastic wine. Um, but 100% Glera, 100% single vineyard, um, two vintages, which is slightly unusual. Um, but it's totally perfect, so very, very lovely. Um, then we go into wine number three. I'll tell you about the last white wine that we'll do at the tasting at the end. But wine number three is the first of the reds, and that's from Bullfont. And this is a very old favourite. Some of you are going to love to see this back. This is a Chanorier. And Chanorier, indigenous grape, Bullfont spent his whole life bringing back ancient grape types. And Chanorier is, is the most inconsistent of lot in some ways because the sort of flavour profile, while it's similar, it just seems to drift around a little bit. And I, I bought this some time ago, it kept selling out. So I, I, I've had this reserved for a while for you actually. And it's the perfect spring wine. because so it gives you, it's got negligible tannins, lovely soft open fruit, all stainless steel fermentation. It's from up in the Friuli near, it's a place called Spilimbergo, it's close to, which is where San Daniele ham comes from. And it is perfect with those sort of foods, actually. It works superbly well. And I just thought it was sort of Easter lamb. Well, actually, lamb, I think, is the next wine, more the Coravina. But this would, be, this would be really good with it, too. But it's, it doesn't touch sides. It's dangerous wine. I just warn you, it's lethal. So Chanorier is the grape type. Um, it's not re recognised by the Friuli authorities as an authorised grape type. So it's Vina de Tavola on the back. Um, and it's, 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 it's a remarkable wine. I think you're gonna super love it. Um, then wine number four is Luigi Rigetti. So Luigi is in, or Louis, it's not Luigi Rigetti really at all, or the, you know, he's not called Luigi, it's Paolo. Um, anyway, they are in Marano, which is um, classic central Valpolicella. And this wine, they kind of created to get around some of the craziness of the Valpolicella rules and regulations. So this is 100% um, uh, Corvina, and Corvina is the great type that is used for Valpolicella. So it's 100% Corvina, it's from the Valpolicella area, it's made with all stainless steel, and it's got this amazing richness and slight raucousness about it, and it's just it's just great. Uh, Tordi is, is crows, so um, field of the crows. It's it's, it's it's great, great wine. So it's um, very, very clean. They're really Amarone producers and Valpolicella producers, but this one just sort of slides in to to use use some of the grape, the Corvina grapes that are excess in the in the system. Um, this really would be lovely with lamb. It's fantastic wine. So that's, that's essentially those are the four wines that are in the conspirators case this quarter. Um, the white wine that we're going to add as wine number two in the tasting is going to be Camilo Favaro's Erbaloce di Caluso. Now this isn't really a conspirator's wine, this is really a Vini Curiosity wine, but I just wanted to show you uh, I, how, how just something brilliant from Piemonte. And it's really interesting to compare a Gavi di Gavi with an Erbaloce. I mean, the price, they're not the same price. You know, there's, there's five, six quid difference in these. Um, but you'll just get an idea of what that extra bit of intensity can bring from the Erbaluce, and it'll be, it's gonna be great tasting. I think these are, this, the Erbaluce from Camilo is one of the best you can get. So, as I said, any questions at all, do get in touch. Um, Otherwise, I look forward to seeing the tasting. The Zoom tastings are booked if you want to. Well, you'll get the email warning you when things are coming up and when the deliveries are anyway. Um, but anyone who's interested in the wine club, please, please, please give us a call. And thank you for watching. Bye.